Hello, I'm David Hunt and welcome to The Art Hunter. An extraordinary visual artist I've got on today who reproduces Renaissance paintings but adds a modern figure in each one. And you'll notice them, believe me, you'll notice them. There's some behind me now you can actually see. Um, he's done so many fam famous people, you know, painted famous people in interesting situations. But let's have a read about what people are saying about him. Sir Elton John, being a collector of art, uh, he is a great talent. I never tire of, of his paintings. He's a leader in the contemporary Renaissance. Stephen Fry, oh goodness, uh, he, his work is so, so sexy and more and more accomplished. Uh, lost in admiration, celebrating 20, over 20 years uh, as a professional artist. His work uh, is included in uh, galleries uh, around Australia, the National Gallery of Australia, the NGV of course, the National Portrait Gallery, to mention a few. Uh, let's meet him. His name is, and somebody that I've known for a long, long time, Ross Watson. Hello, Ross. Hey, David. Good to be with you. Uh, good to be with you. Now, you've just come through the dreaded COVID. So uh, I life, have. life is I have. Um, a little bit sort of all over the place for you. Because I was supposed to have interviewed you oh, uh, yeah. a, a, month, a, a couple of months ago, and you were sick, so mm. we rescheduled. So uh, well, welcome back to the land of the living. Mm, thank you. <laughs> I still have a little brain fog, so I'll warn, warn the viewers in advance, but hopefully I'll be okay. Right, brilliant. So where did painting begin for you, Ross? It began when, you know, I was about this high. Yep. You know, five or six, and, uh, you know, I just loved um, uh, painting and drawing, and it, it, it was just all my, always my favourite uh, subject at school. Thankfully, I had... Um, uh, you know, and a wonderful support of parents and teachers uh, and my g grandparents um, who encouraged me, you know, without being sort of pushy, but just really um, nicely encouraging. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's what I absolutely love doing from yep. very, very early on. But you're, you're actually, what the, the path you've taken, that very much Renaissance, Renaissance era, mm. um, that would have taken, uh, reproducing it, that would have taken a lot of study. It did, and that's why, you know, the, the years at uh, art college were important. I mean, there's some artists that don't go to art, art college and still go on and do wonderful things. Of course. But it's a, but it's a, it's a, g a great grounding. Yep. But I still, I, I, you know, some of the most important development in my work, of course, came after le leaving uh, art college. And, uh, you know, I remo moved um, uh, to, uh, from Brisbane to Melbourne when I was all of sort of 19 or 20. I remember I'd, I'd uh, gone to, uh, to Europe for the first time when I was 18. And so seeing the National Gallery in London and uh, the Prado in Madrid or the Louvre, um, and, and, and literally, I was living in them for <laughs> three months, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, tra traveling on a, 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 a budget. I think back now and think, oh my God, how did I do it? You know, but <laughs> it was exciting and, yeah. and, and thrilling every step of the way. Um, but yeah, I moved to Melbourne. I actually moved in just around the corner from here, Grey Street in St. Kilda. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, um, but I kept, um, I kept painting. You know, I kept, um, even though I, I had next to nothing, I remember I, I, I used to draw on the floor and I had this like foam esky with a piece of glass on it, like it was that basic. <laughs> I was living very simply. And, um, uh, but, you know, when I look back now, like it took me till I was, I think it wasn't until I reached 40 that I, sort of really look back and realize how driven and determined I'd been and and passionate about art yeah you know um, it's I, I find um, you know it's, it's 
meet a lot of younger people and you ask, oh, well, you know, what are you going to do with your life? And this, you unfortunately meet so many and you rarely come across one where they're really passionate and absolutely connected and driven with something. Yeah, at an um, early age. Yeah. Yes, at, a, at an early age. So I was actually very um, ambitious and focused and I, I worked very hard right through my 20s and 30s and yeah. 40s. You know, I'd, I'd paint up to 12 or 13 hours a day. Wow, wow. Yes. Okay, well, but, but just looking back on what you do, the amount of time and effort you would have spent um, mm. learning how to paint a classical um, Renaissance painting, the detail that you've achieved, and congratulations on that, um, Ross, because you, it's so life like the real painting, but then all of a sudden you, you turn, turn it into something extraordinary with a modern figure in it. Usually a man, 90% a man, not all the time though. That's right. Uh, and usually with very skimpy clothes on. Uh, where did that concept come from, Ross? Because it's so original, so different to everyone else. Um, mm, good, good question. Um, I'm, t I'm trying to take myself back to when I first started uh, appropriating uh, other works. And, it, and it, it was at a time where other artists around the world were appropriating work and in music as as you know uh, well um, but the the important thing is like uh, I'm always wanting to explore a theme that's relevant today or as relevant it is today as was 200 or 300 years ago yeah um, you know that this work behind me here beautiful the cameras can see it featuring yep. Fra oh, we'll show it up on the Fra screen anyway. Francois Sagat. Um, now, that painting was inspired by not only meeting Franç Francois, but at the time... And who is he? Uh, Francois Sagat is um, a French uh, actor and porn star and uh, uh, probably, you know, uh, in just about everybody's uh, top five porn, st porn stars, I think, gay porn stars in the world. Um, but um, he's a very interesting guy. And um, he, at the time, was uh, traveling in Australia and um, he was working with, you know, the uh, Victorian AIDS Council and um, uh, s uh, similar groups around Australia and doing a lot of uh, campaigns for um, uh, promoting condom use at the time. And you might remember that the Vatican uh, were still insisting on nobody should be using uh, uh, condoms for yeah. any reason whatsoever. You know, of course, it made every bit of sense. Um, so I thought, you know, uh, I'm going to paint Caravaggio's uh, 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 instead of replacing St. Peter yep. uh, as, as the saint, um, uh, Francois as the saint, because um, he was one of people at the time that was contributing to really valuable work in mm. promoting um, safe sex. Mm. And um, uh, so that's the main theme behind and, that and, one. Uh, and, and at the time, like yeah. when Caravaggio painted his painting, I mean, those large religious paintings, most of which you might know were done sort of later in his life, I mean, they were like the, the great billboards of the day weren't they yeah. for for, for, yeah. for promoting Catholicism yep and um, uh, look how it's all changed yep and what did he think when you know, like you told him you were going to paint him in in this famous painting pose what did he say well look one of the most special things that happened was um, uh, he sent an email um, a few months after the uh, painting was re you know, released and um, uh, it actually uh, um, was exciting. It received a lot of media coverage around the world. And um, uh, a friend of his was studying at the prestigious uh, Ecole de Louvre, which is uh, the, the uh, Institute for Art uh, History and uh, uh, situated 
in the Louvre. Yep. And um, uh, the incredible thing was uh, uh, she'd sent a photograph of the lecture hall and my painting was projected on the wall and they were discussing the painting under um, the subject of the, the lecture, which was uh, Saints and Homosexuality. And uh, when I'd met uh, Francois, I remember asking him, you know, uh, how did he enjoy Paris uh, living there? And um, so he sort of grew up in Eastern Europe and he answered uh, indicating that, um, well, you know, he, he loved so many things about it, but, um, you know, I think quite a few men within the gay scene there had sort of, uh, whether it was out of jealousy for his sort of success or whatever, but it often made him feel like an outsider, that he wasn't a true Parisian. And you can experience the same in London, you know, like yeah. there's some people that are, yeah. get a bit snobby about that sort of thing. <laughs> and... Um, so, in his response to me, that photograph of the lecture theatre, he said, um, you know, it was words to the effect of, well, you know, up you guys, because they're talking about me in the Louvre Museum. And I thought, wow, well, that's, that's fantastic. That's brilliant. Yes. That would have been great for you. You, you would have thought, yes, yeah, 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 yeah fantastic. You're, you're collected by so many people around the world, including Elton John, and, uh, and there's one collector in America in particular that's very favourable to you that buys the originals. That's uh, right. Yeah, for extraordinary amounts of money, rightly so. Um, you know, like, what an honour it must be for you, uh, Ross, mm. to be collected by famous people and very wealthy people. Yeah, well, there's been times I've kind of had to pinch myself. <laughs> um, it, yeah, James and his partner Louis in New York, uh, so, you know, that they've really become my patrons. Um, I think uh, they've gone over 30 original paintings. Whoa. Yes. Where, where, they where have a they number of room? very beautiful homes. Oh, a number of... <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, we last saw them um, at uh, well, my New York World Pride exhibition. Uh, and uh, and then they invited us to, to stay. Um, they, they have uh, uh, well, their weekend, which is a, 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 a very very beautiful uh, beach house in uh, on Long Island, and many of the paintings are, are, are there. And what's it like walking into that house with your paintings on the wall? Oh, it was in, it was incredible because one of the paintings is is uh, like one of the largest paintings I've ever painted, and um, uh, to see it in this enormous room with cathedral ceilings. And wow. It, it looked, um, uh, th that was impressive to, to see it. To sort of walk up the staircase and you could view it on another level, look, look wow. across to it. But um, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's always fun traveling. Like uh, I remember once visiting and staying with a collector uh, in a uh, great friend, uh, Dan, in, at Toronto and so sort of painting that I, I remember sweating over in 40 degree sort of su uh, you know Melbourne summer and then seeing it uh, on uh, Dan's uh, wall and seeing snow falling outside Aye. in the middle of a yeah. Canadian winter. Yeah. Um, yeah. But look, I'm just, uh, if you told me when I was 10 or 15, you know, that uh, uh, you know, when you, you this would grow happen. up, you're yeah. going to have uh, all these uh, uh, wonderful people around the world that would be wanting to collect your art. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also the fact that um, you, you're very relevant uh, with what you do, you know, like the Renaissance painting, mm -hmm. the, the, the classic paintings that you reproduce. But th the, the placement of uh, the the person from now mm. is so clever and you know like there, there's one that they've got a Walkman back in the days when we used to have Walkmans uh, there there's a, a couple that you've done with AFL uh, footballers uh, from yes. Collingwood That's back right. oh, the, 10 years ago or more that yes, would, would that be would be than, yes. um, so you know like you're always keeping yourself one step ahead of what's going on um, you know uh, Mitchum behind us here Matthew Mitchum 
uh, that that amazing one that that you've done of him. Uh, you know, like he just won the gold medal at um, the Olympic Games That's for right. diving, and here you go. You you know, like you do you call them up and say, "Hey, would you like to do?" Is that what happens? Uh, yeah, look, so, uh, some of the time it's worked that way. Other other times um, we've met socially, or but uh, but yeah, with with that painting, so it it references. Uh, um, the uh, Italian painter Ricci, I think one of it's one of the most famous and successful Baroque uh, paintings, and uh, the title of the Fall of Faden. And uh, when we look at the, you know, the pose or position of Faden, he could be diving into a pool. He's of course upside down. Yep. But I deliberately I wanted to sort of twist it, and because Matthew appear, appears to be sort of falling through the sky, but uh, as I think uh, it was uh, Professor Martin Comte that wrote, uh, is he in fact falling or is he plunging into this, is it sky or is it water? So, <laughs> you know, I love the ambiguity yeah, uh, yeah. there. Okay, so here you are, so many famous people, as, as I've mentioned, so Elton John and, and um, Stephen Fry, you know, like knowing those people, Ross, you know, like, you know, like, you, yes, you're pinching yourself because of the success you're having with um, your art. But the fact is, you're now rubbing shoulders with people like that. Um, it, it's, you, you must be pretty pleased with yourself. Well, it's, I mean, honestly, it's, re it's really is very humbling. But it's, it's, uh, you know, uh, both Elton and Ian McCullen, I mean, of course, they're, hugely inspiring. Uh, I'm so grateful for the, the support that they've both offered and of course Stephen Fry. Um, and uh, you know that's an, that's an ins inspiration and motivation in itself just you know having their yeah. um, attention and interest and support. Yeah. Yeah. And you know the three of them are both uh, working hard constantly with um, fundraising and uh, education awareness relating to GLBTI issues and HIV AIDS and um, and you know the Ross Watson Gallery now has a, a long history uh, of um, fundraising projects and yep. supporting yep whether it's well, the you've Elton John AIDS Foundation yep. so yep. And you've supported me with at Joy 94.9. Right. I've asked yeah. you, yeah. Um, you know, when we've been doing art auctions, and you've, of course, said yes straight yeah. away, which I yeah. thank you for that oh, as well. It's a pleasure. Um, talking about the LGBTIQ community, mm. uh, World Pride that was in New York, um, mm. I hear you had a very successful exhibition there. Yes, it turned out to be uh, the busiest. Well, uh, you know, there were days that were... This is, like three, four hundred people coming through the door. Whoa! And um, uh, just before arriving in New York, I remember just being super excited one morning over breakfast. An email coming in from the uh, the New York Times saying they wanted to to cover it. And you know, I read the New York Times breakfast every morning on my phone. I subscribe. Yeah. And uh, you know, since the years ago, the um, rise of uh, Donald Trump. Um, you know, of course, the New York Times is one of the, unfortunately, relatively few fact-checked mm. uh, newspapers in the world, so I have so much respect for it. Um, but, um, so they, they did a, uh, they were like a sponsor of Pride, uh, along with ABC, America TV, uh, and um, so they both covered the exhibition. Wow. And um, uh, New York Times had a, um, an entire page, you know, if you're visiting New York, here's our top 10 pride um, must-do yeah. things. Yeah. And uh, so we were written up the exhibition un under that. And then, um, yes, ABC TV uh, uh, got in, in touch. And um, I remember, um, uh, like Stephen Morgan and Andrew Vance working on the exhibition and doing a wonderful job. And they said to me, Oh my God! You, you're going to be doing a, a you know this a TV interview <laughs> in the gallery at like 9 a.m. You know, <laughs> sort of like one o'clock start today, David. It's very civilized. And I at first sort of thought, 
oh my god, I can't do nine a.m. I'll be like, a, you know, I need six coffees at least before I can. And they said, you're doing it at nine. It's too important. Yeah. Of course. But um, and um, Derek Waller uh, um, did the interview. He was fantastic. And uh, so it went out on the six o'clock news and was seen by millions across New York State. And uh, that then brought um, a lot more wow. people into wow. to the exhibition. Wow. So, uh, but yeah, it was pretty exciting. It was in Chelsea. We had a very beautiful gallery. And um, I think the, the show, the hang of the show, and uh, it, it really looked, looked, uh, looked great. So there were a lot of people that had never seen my work before that came in. And then we had, uh, uh, you know, uh, people from London and Germany that had come into exhibitions, whether it was in Sydney or London from years ago, that were sort of ah, ret returning. Ah. Yeah. So, and, um, you know, Alexis, some of the models, Alexis from London. It's yeah. There in his uh, um, uh, football gear. Um, uh, he was there opening night. So it was very exciting. Yeah. And of course, the, the, there was an incredible buzz yeah. in New York. You know, the Clintons flew in for it. Because um, this uh, only happens every so often, doesn't it? Well, it's, it's every, not. what is it, three years or four years. Yeah. Of course, Sydney has it. It's a next World year. Pride for yeah. 2023. But Lady Gaga and Donatello Versace turned up in at the Stonewall Inn, where, you know, it all began. Yeah, yeah, The yep. riots and... Uh, um, so it w really was just thrilling being in yeah. New York for that, whatever it was, three weeks. Or yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Now, you, you know, because we all can't afford to buy one of your originals, you do a lot, lot of prints, which are, are beautifully presented as well. But you also do incredible coffee table books. You know, like the you. extraordinary coffee table book. Thank you uh, very what, much. What made you think, oh, I'm going to go down that track? For a start, um, Andrew Vance uh, has done the design of those books, and uh, uh, huge credit to him. He's done a wonderful job. But I mean, I remember like discussing it with him very early on, and um, he and a number of collectors of my work years ago had said, you know, why don't you consider doing it? You know, and um, so the first book was. A, a published and self-published was called Overview and it was a limited edition and it actually sold for twelve hundred dollars so wow. it wasn't you know but it ended up selling out because so many collectors want, wanted a copy and um, and then the second book um, Bruno Gamunda the German publisher um, who'd been coming into my exhibitions. He came into the Berlin exhibition. And I think he came into one of my London exhibitions. But he certainly came into the Sydney exhibition. And I remember I was um, talking with visitors to my exhibition and I was aware uh, Bruno was just standing back and, uh, you know, watching me, observing. Whoa. And after an hour, he came over and he said, do you know, um, I've never seen other artists uh, a, in their own exhibitions and talking about the work the way you do. Why don't you write? He said, I want to publish a book on your work and I'd love you to write just as you're speaking about the work now and uh, for each, the beginning of each chapter. Uh -huh. And that's what we did. Yep. So, and then for my last, uh, m most recent book, um, Untitled 2, uh, continued with that theme with me writing about um, the themes I was exploring yeah. in each chapter. And did you enjoy that, the, the writing side? I, I do. Right? I do. Good. Because it's, you know, I just try and... Expressing uh, yourself, exactly, I suppose. Exactly, just as we're speaking now, right? I'm yep. speaking now. So, um, but yeah, I do, I do love writing. I love reading uh, books and gr great writing, Yeah, you know. Yeah. So well, congratulations I, 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 on that. Reading uh, Doug, yeah. Douglas... Stewart, um, um, he, he won the Booker Prize, young young uh, Irish author, but Young Mungo is the oh, title of oh, the yeah, book. Yep, I'm in yep. the middle of reading that yep. at the moment, and uh, wow, mm. uh, he's a fantastic writer. Yeah. 
Yes. You were saying about the early days that you would paint for you know, like, you know, many hours, mm. 19 hours, I think you mentioned. Oh, yes. 12, 13. 12, 12, 12 13, or yes. right, exaggerating a bit. <laughs> uh, 19 is a lot longer. You'd be yes. doing it in your sleep. Uh, so how is it going now? You know, like, uh, you've achieved so much. Uh, mm, with your art, you. are you finding it difficult now to paint, or because not, you know, like you, not you're traveling? But I just, you know, maybe like a long distance, a more seasoned long distance <laughs> runner, I, I pace myself more. So, you know, uh, about eight hours is that would be my maximum these days. And do, so, would you do that in one, one, have, one hit? Eight hours in one hit? Um, well, always stop. For lunch, yeah. Oh well, of course and, you've uh, got to walking, yeah. walking the dogs, dogs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> two beautiful fox terriers. But uh, um, so there's that at least an hour break. Um, but um, yeah, about eight hours. And if if I've had a day where I feel, and there's some evenings where I feel really stuffed, it's been demanding. Mm. Um, then sometimes I, the following day, I won't paint, or I'll, I'll paint half day, mm. something like that. But uh, yeah, so I don't. Um, I'm not working with the the speed and energy I did uh, in my twenties. But as my dad reminds me, well, that's um, uh, that's perfectly fine. We yep. all, you know, exactly. But what about the inspiration, Ross? You know, like I, you do, you bolt up in bed sometimes. And go, oh, there's an idea. I, th I think I might, you know, like try my hand at doing that. You know, like there, there's one that's directly behind you. It's a, a surfer at the beach uh, with a, yes. a grenadier guard. Is it grenadier guard? Uh, he's a lifeguard. Oh, they're the actually called lifeguards. lifeguards. Are they? So the title of that work, how could I not title it to lifeguards? <laughs> they're both lifeguards. Like they're both lifeguards. Very different kinds they're, of lifeguards. Yep. But yes, one is. Uh, one of uh, the Queen's lifeguards, and the other one's uh, Aussie life lifeguard that you you could occasionally see absolutely naked on the beach. Mm -hmm. Do you just his surfboard? Just his surfboard under his under his arm. <laughs> um, so so yeah, I'm, with I'm, a work work like yeah. that. I mean, I had I remember I'd come back from another trip to Europe, and I'd been in London, and. Um, Really, it's sort of, you know, the references of the Queen's Guards. There is a connection to my grandfather that grew up in London, and he he came out to Australia with his brother when he was just seventeen or so, um, and he was, uh, uh, you know, very important uh, to, to to me, but with my art. And in fact, when he retired. Um, I remember I was staying with him. He, uh, he, I was painting, and he started sort of painting with me. And he, he ended up taking it up as a hobby: oil oh. painting and painting landscapes. And okay, it became his passion in retirement. Yeah, um, but um, so there's that connection to, to Pa and to London, and um, uh, in that painting. And the other thing with with Pa is. Uh, when we went down, whenever he visited, when we were down the beach house, we'd go down onto the beach. It's incredible to think now, but um, he'd always have his formal, keep his formal jacket on, and even more formal pants. I and mean, his shoes might be off, or and so there was that very English okay. thing that never changed. Never changed, yeah. And so that's very important to communicate yeah I'm looking at that painting yeah. uh, so that you know and as you might have noticed in many of my works there are, I love complementary opposite opposite you do or, or, or yes images that mm. that have connections but in mm. in one way they're complete opposites mm. right but very tongue in cheek as well, you know, like it's being a bit very cheeky, cheeky boom boom. Uh, and uh, but that's what I love about it. Sometimes you look and go, oh, Ross, you've outdone yourself this time. You know, like just pushing the boundaries a little bit. Well, I guess honestly, I'm not sort of setting out to do that. I mean, with that painting, you know, I, I, I was just so struck by, well, how handsome the 
the English lifeguard is, and I mean that uniform, what a beautiful uniform, and mm. it was, uh, it was a huge challenge painting the detail, particularly the detailed gold were in the uh, mm. um, helmet, uh, and the um, uh, what are these called? The the uh, well, that holds the, it on. The, 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 the yes, the, under his chin, the um, the cha uh, the chain. Yeah, right. They're they're quite tricky to to paint as well. Um, and and then of course, you know the beauty of of uh, seeing the back of Jamison, the model, the the, the surfer, and uh, um, just the the beautiful the beauty of uh, the naked human figure. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, I, I bet you you don't find it um, very hard looking for models you know like if you ross watson puts the call out you would have um 20 people lined up wanting to be your model wouldn't you yeah uh well um the you know sometimes i just spot someone it can even be on in instagram you know that's that's how i uh met uh, alexis you know i came across him on Instagram and I was so impressed not only by his physical uh, beauty but his um, his posts where you know he's often uh, posting about uh, mental health issues or even encouraging uh, his uh, followers on Instagram he has about 50,000 followers and you know now come on guys uh, remember every th what three four months you should be getting your STI checks and and Fantastic stuff like that mm, that mm. not not many people post about. Yeah, yeah. So um, I admire him for that, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to to paint him. Right. And of course, I learnt he's rugby player on the um, King, uh, Kings Cross Steelers, so it's the London's gay rugby team. Right. Okay. So his whole story was appealing, oh, worthwhile to, yeah. to me. Yeah. So, Fantastic. Uh, um, yeah. Ross Watson, congratulations on a brilliant career and I can't wait to see what comes up next that, oh. you, that you'll be doing. So Thanks thank so you. Much, David. Well, thank you for the incredible art that you, you produce and being a lovely person as well. Oh, thank you. You've been watching The Art Hunter. I'm David Hunt and we'll see you again next week.